There you go. She's global. <laughs> and looking damn good doing it. So there you go. Okay, guys. So we have hit the recording uh, button. So we're going to kick off. Just, just for that comment. Yeah, we okay. are now live. So welcome, everybody. This is another Crypto Wednesday show. And this is show number 10. We are really, really, really excited to have you all here. If you're watching the live stream, we're happy to uh, have you here. If you're watching the recording, thank you for watching and please share it with your crypto and blockchain friends. Uh, just before we get started, just some little uh, ground rules uh, from all the people that are joining in the live Zoom stream. If you do have some questions or you want to participate in one way or another, please use the chat box to forward in your questions so we can forward them to, to Andy so he can, uh, to his best knowledge, answer the questions that are coming up there. Later on during the show, we will also get some previous speakers or upcoming speakers involved. Uh, like every week, we call them our Lumi speakers, and we're always happy to see them uh, joining the call and participating. This is what it's all about, sharing and giving back to the, to the industry. Uh, so that's it from the, let's say, the, the house ground rules. Before we get started, for the people that don't know me, uh, together with my friend Gordon Einstein, we are the, uh, the, the pioneers who took the initiative 10 weeks ago to launch Crypto Wednesday. And every week we are here to invite our um, industry friends from all around the world uh, to reveal whatever they are doing now, where they are excited about, latest markets, insights, just to share their, their vision on, on where we are and what we're going to, going to do. Uh, and first of all, my name is Sander de Bruyne. I did that uh, as well my name. I'm from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. But this week, I'm not in my hometown. This week, I'm in Faro, Portugal. So we are streaming from all over the world, and I'm happy to uh, be here. Already met some great entrepreneurs from the Portugal area, which is a great country. Uh, and before we go to our very special guest from the Asian continent, uh, Gordon, let me give you the word because you're in back in LA this week. I'm back in LA this week. I had a great trip to Croatia last week. It's uh, one of the few places you can actually get to from America, though you need a molecular um, genetic screening for COVID, but that's within 48 hours old, but made it, had a great time. That was my birthday trip. Um, but yes, back in Los Angeles, that's why it's dark out. It's 5.30 a.m. here. So here's some crypto dedication for all of you. You'll see the light come through the windows eventually during this show. And you may notice normally I wear, you know, a collared shirt and a jacket, but it's Los Angeles, in addition to everything else going on, is having the most intense heat wave, I think, ever. So I'm in the house, windows closed, air conditioning on, and trying, trying to stay cool. So I'm happy to be here. I'm thrilled to sound th through you to have met our special guest who I'll let you introduce. And yeah, episode 10, but let's get right on it. Cool, so, 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 so we, have, we have you in LA, in US, myself. Sorry, yes, I'm in Los Angeles. You're in Los, in Los Angeles. Angeles, I'm in Portugal, and our very special guest, one of my, my personal friends, is Mr. Andy Leon, and I think Andy, you're in Singapore right now, am I right? Yes, I'm stuck in Singapore. Stuck. <laughs> You're stuck in Singapore, but this is where you're originally from, right? Yes, yes, yes. This is where I was. Uh, I'm from, and um, happy to be here. You know, got to see some good friends as well during this um, sort of a rock lockdown period. So it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So just just to give the audience a, a, a little background, I met Andy a couple of years ago. I think it was one of the crypto and blockchain events. It was in Tokyo, Japan, if I'm right. This yep. is where, where we met. We met face to face and we had a good connection from the first moment on. Since then, we are working back and forth. We got involved in a couple of projects uh, together. So I consider you not only as a business friend, but also as a personal friend. And because we also want to emphasize not only on the European market with our guests uh, and or the US market, but also uh, the Asia market, which is a really, really important uh, continent. Um, for the crypto and blockchain scene. I said to Gordon, you know, let's get the best of the best uh, people involved. And uh, I'm happy to have you on the, on the show, Eddie, because I see you, uh, you're, you, know, you know, you're a serial entrepreneur, you're an investor, you're an author, you wrote a, a, a bestseller book. Uh, so you're all over, the, all over the place and you're a well-known keynote speaker all over Asia and also outside of that. So we're happy to, uh, to have you on the show and share your insights and maybe you can give the audience a little background on what you did before you entered the crypto and blockchain scene because you have a, a, a wide expertise. Sure, sure. Thanks for the uh, 
kind, very kind words um, from uh, my dear friend Sander. Yes, we met in Japan and uh, things um, got off uh, very well since uh, from uh, from the friendship and uh, uh, and from the business perspective. So, so a bit about myself uh, before blockchain. That was um, not too long ago, really not too long ago. So, I started the, you know, into the blockchain scene um, more um, active and uh, doing a lot more since two zero one seven. So before two zero one seven, maybe maybe let's go about a decade uh, before before two zero one seven. I was um, very much into the the business scene. So if you look at uh, some of my the, the profile that I have on uh, LinkedIn, um, I was um, one of the earlier director in uh, in the Singapore's oldest think tank called the Singapore Institute of International Affairs. Uh, there, uh, I know a lot of uh, good people, top guys, uh, t- of course, top women, top companies that are in Singapore. Um, they. They are our members, and we talk a lot about how um, the international affairs, the politics part of things, is going to play in in the businesses that we run. You know, mm-hmm. so so that was the earlier earlier portion. Then after which I went on to um, to um, a few other things. So one of them is um, I went on to work for a uh, investment company called Save Our Planet Investment. Mm-hmm. It's run by a, a very powerful lady in Singapore who owns uh, a listed company for luxury watches. She's a very well-known lady in the field. Mm-hmm. Um, then uh, I moved on to uh, take on a management role with uh, Singapore Business Federation. That is with the, the biggest uh, federation that is uh, quasi-government linked. Um, and I and, uh, was the uh, managing director there. Then a lot of other things uh, uh, spark off during that period of time. You know, I started my journey, you know, into uh, investments. So I look at the bigger, bigger investments. You know, I look at uh, investing my own money into the medical and healthcare sector. Mm-hmm. And um, that didn't stop me. Uh, of course, it, it gave me a good, good results, good connections, good profit. Um, and from the accumulated uh, uh, wealth or returns that we, we got, uh, we invested into a lot of uh, many other things, you know, from, uh, from media related companies uh, to trading companies, so forth and so on. So in 2017, um, I was still doing medical related uh, work uh, mm-hmm. and investments. Um, then what, what, what really happened was I was being invited to uh, be part of a community, uh, a committee, you know, of a pharmaceutical company, where they talk about uh, fake goods, you know, fake products, and so forth. So during that meeting, we have a lot of uh, high-level talk, you know, from from the uh, ministry uh, part of part of uh, things to the uh, very um, very theoretical kind of uh, professors, and then we have people like myself, which which uh, you know, which run businesses and so forth. The, the end result was, um, hey, hey, man, let's explore blockchain. You know, back then, I, 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 I don't really know what blockchain can really do, you know, in, in 2017. But um, I, I had uh, earlier touches on a, a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Then I started to jar everything together and uh, go very much uh, in-depth and full-time into this space and uh, I have not regretted since, you know, so this is a, a short introduction of, a, of, of what I've done before crypto or before blockchain. Yep. And, and, and Andy, since you got involved into the, to the blockchain industry, you, you're involved in a lot of projects uh, you invest in a lot of projects, but you also, um, and this was uh, uh, pre-corona, you were also a, a well-known speaker at a lot of events. Where you shared your knowledge, maybe, maybe you can share a little bit on, on how you spent your time uh, 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 before Corona hits uh, it's it's the market on sharing your knowledge in, into the into the industry. Um, I think not knowledge sharing within this industry um, is very um, I would say very superficial at times. You know, mm-hmm. uh, we we a lot of our own peers. You know, you know, we go to. Uh, 
blockchain related events and you kept seeing the same people over and over again you know yeah. uh, especially in the more active markets like uh, singapore uh japan uh south korea you know where i was uh, where, where i was very active before uh covid so um i think the knowledge sharing part uh for for myself i normally uh, uh put my time onto some of these these events that are more mainstream um or uh, closed door round tables with uh, with some of the bigger companies. So I, I can't reveal who, but I have done more than twenty sessions. You know, with uh, uh, multinational uh, corporations mm -hmm. uh, sharing um, how blockchain can 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 affect them, uh, how blockchain can really change their current business model, and how they can harness the goodness uh, from from this technology. Mm -hmm. So so before that. You know, th this is what happened. But but as you know from my my profile, you know, I I, do, I dealt a lot with uh, governments. So on on and off on on a, on a weekly basis, I'm actually involved with uh, many different phone calls from uh, on, on a ministerial level, uh, all the way to um, to uh, to more like a like a business federation uh, uh, anger from uh, different parts of the world from. Not only in Asia, but also in uh, um, uh, Europe, in US, um, and also in Middle East. So the, my my coverage is quite good in, in that in that sense. We have helped to adopt uh, different um, usage uh, case studies, uh, pilot tests, pilot trials, and uh, also actual implementation. You know, uh, within within the government space on how different blockchain can can help them how how the different uh, blockchain or even protocol uh, can fit to what they want you know so they are no stranger to 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 the main the main boys like uh, ethereum uh, um, bnb uh, binance chain uh, all the way to eos where where you know sander knows that I, I i love how how the energy is you know uh, for, for eos and so forth so we, we do a, a fair bit, you know, from a more um, commercialized aspect to help companies and government to, to use this technology. So, so far, I think things have been very interesting, you know, whether it's pre or, 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 or the pre COVID or the current COVID situation. But um, as, as, as we move along to a more web based uh, interaction, um, I, I then again realized that you know a lot, a lot, a lot more companies are are open to to learn more since they can't go anywhere. You know, go government has more time to look at how the how the regulations are going to work for them, so forth and so on. So, so that, that kind of sharing session becomes very private. And personally, I felt that the private sessions are the one uh, that can benefit most. You know, from 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 the work that we are doing. Um, not not those conferences because conferences a lot of which are all for pitching a lot for I mean a lot of bullshit as well you know the same old thing you keep repeating and so forth so so the, the private sessions are the one where um, um, stakeholders ask very very detailed questions sometimes mm -hmm. silly but but they dare to ask it because we are in a private environment uh, Chatham House rules. Um, and so forth and so on is 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 very is very nice and um, uh, uh, conducive, you know, for for a lot of questions uh, 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 unanswered, you know, and you can't really search those questions online. You know? mm -hmm. so, so, I think the benefit during this uh, uh, COVID period has uh, pushed the uh, adoption of um, blockchain a lot faster, in my own opinion, uh, uh, and. Uh, I see a lot more uh, uh, government link um, projects that is uh, in the pipeline, you know, from uh, uh, digital ID all the way to uh, uh, security related um, projects. So I can't share much, but, but I do want to share that I think this COVID uh, situation has helped, uh, you know, the growth of blockchain or, or the, the digital the, the digital work a lot better, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Talking about COVID. Yeah, yeah, sure, Gordon, go ahead. 
So, I like the direction it's going. Just something struck me as interesting, which is during last week's panel, and, and Luca, who's on um, mm -hmm. in, in here, was actually in there. It was on Croatia, and there was a pretty lively debate, including the panelists and our alumni speakers, about whether working on blockchain, we should tear down the existing system and replace it, you know, the system, or act as a bridge from that existing system to this kind of new world or you know how to play it and what, what's striking me about your bio and your background is almost from the start it seems or maybe directly from the start you've taken a sort of regulatory work with the authorities mutually educate approach you know in the, I, I i i don't we don't doesn't it, Maybe it's a revolution in its own way, but it's a different kind of revolution. The is your and you're you're not a lawyer, I gather. You're a very in tune business person. What what started you at the beginning taking the government involvement track, even before blockchain, back back at the at the think tank? What what was what's the germ of that? Well, um, you know, you know, since since we are all very open people and so forth, you know, I, I had a chat with Gordon and, and Sander separately as well you know i told them hey man let's there's no agenda just freestyle you know you, we could talk about anything so what what i want to see, share you know uh pertaining to gordon's uh question is um so if you look at the background you know i i started my own uh, supply chain blockchain uh, solutions company uh in in 201718 um we we ended we ended the uh not we as in i ended uh, my part in 2019, uh, basically because I see that there are a lot of scams that are running in, 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 in this field and is totally unregulated, um, non, non-compliance-like, you know, for, for me. And, and being, a, 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 being, being a Singaporean uh, who has the, uh, uh, the, the knowledge on how some of this uh, compliance and, and, and governance work is, 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 is like and how important it is. I started my journey uh, looking at how I could help government instead of uh, talking to more of such companies which are very, very much scammy and to me sometimes very skeptical because there's no way a an empty shell is able to generate that kind of market cap out from nothing, mm -hmm. right? right? So, so, so based on what we did previously with uh, with our supply chain uh, uh, company, is that we look at proper um, contracts, proper businesses, and and it's a very straightforward model: work done, get paid, clients pay in tokens, right? So you you generate a very straightforward kind of. Uh, uh, results and a very straightforward return that you could, you could calculate, right? And I find that it's very straightforward. Of course, that's not the most enticing, uh, most um, profitable way to run a uh, blockchain company in 201718, where a lot of people got very good um, uh, uh, investments. You know, from, from, from our end, I, I, I could say that we are stupid. You know, but we never did any ICOs. You're here. You're not in jail. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Not not good enough. To be. We're seeing your face. It's not through like ten, you know, proxy servers. You didn't go. No, 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 no. There's no need, man. There's no need. But but, 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 but let, let me let me let, let me ask it a little bit differently. Even before blockchain, what, mm -hmm. what caught my ear is that you were working with this Singaporean government-related think tank. So yeah, it seems. Yeah even before noti noticing the scamminess of some of these blockchain or ICO ventures, your natural inclination or your natural bent is sort of a work with government regulatory business approach as opposed to a, you know, crypto is going to tear down the world approach, you know, sort of anarcho-capitalist. There, there seems to be different streams within the blockchain and crypto community. So I'm wondering, just on a personal level, even before blockchain, like I'm trying to go to your origin story, your origin has origin story. What, what was the germ or the source of your of your tendency to work with regulators and work with compliance? 
And just before you answer, we have Professor Wolf Kauf joining us. He's an alumni speaker. He, I think when we open up the mic, he's going to be first. And I think you guys share sort of a similar tendency here. But I, I want to tease it out a little bit. So go ahead, please. You, you, if you look at this, um, the, the current situation for COVID, um, companies are, are, are not doing very well. You know, uh, like I mentioned on Twitter, there are a lot of zombie, uh, zombie companies as well. Uh, that rely on uh, government aid and so forth. So, so I, I mean, before all this COVID situation, I, I do believe that um, if we work closely with government, arm's length, you know, not, not sleeping directly with them, you know, arm's length, get their input. I think our journey for, for cryptocurrency or blockchain adoption would be a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. Second part of things is that governments would have the kind of money that, that some companies need, right? right? They are able to give out um, better, uh, better projects. They can learn about what blockchain can do. Uh, we, we as the uh, service provider can then adopt blockchain in, in, a, in a better manner, you know, not just sign a few MOUs and then, well, you know, it's mm -hmm. going to go big. You know? um, th those, again, is not going to work, you know, but if you directly work with government link projects, you know, you can get your, your, your milestones hit uh, fairly fast. Uh, when, when government knows what you're doing and how this can be done, they can work with you closer. But you look at this from a more short-term perspective, right? Because the long-term uh, long view is that, well, you know, we can't rely on, 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 on government, you know, where, where the bank screws, screw us up, the central bank, you know, make, make, make us feel worse and so forth. Right. Um, you know, so a lot of all these thoughts were there. So, so my, my very initial uh, take on, on the new industry is that, you know, make sure that the government are, you know, are okay with, with what, we do, what we are doing. They know what we are doing. We are not pirates. You know, we are not there to grab the market and run kind of thing. So let them believe in what we do. And then slowly and surely we are able to be more decentralized in, 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 this, uh, in, this, uh, in this field. And we can do a lot more. So uh, in, in simple terms, like small kids, you know, we let's be friends with, with the so-called enemy. And then when things are a lot better, you know what, what, you know what, you know what, what are the parameters and so forth. You can then, you can then, you take that chance to uh, change some parts of the current world that you didn't really like it. So that, that was, that was the intention, uh, at least for me, you know, for, for the blockchain space. But again, when you look back at the history of what I've done, um, I do believe that a fair bit of good compliance, a fair bit of, uh, hand holding from the government can really benefit us because I, 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 I've seen this happen, you know, in, in Asia where, where uh, I work very closely with the South Korean government. Um, I see a lot of a push and adoption that is being done uh, smoothly, you know, because of, of, of their blessings. Mm -hmm. So I hope the same can, can be done uh, throughout the world. And that is also the reason why I kept saying uh, in the beginning that the private chats with the uh, corporations, uh, MNCs, uh, even the bigger SMEs and governments are very important because they are the one who will help to build the current system in place. You know, so we have a group of people who are totally decentralized. You know, then we have another group which are traditional businesses, traditional system who try, who are trying to understand what we are trying to do, and from then benefit. Uh, from from this this whole work and systems that we are we are trying to drive at, so that that's how I see. You know. Interesting. Is, is there perhaps and I'm, it's kind of stereotypical difference between east and west here? Where and I'm just projecting. I'm just asking. You know, where in Asia you fundamentally need the government's go ahead to do something at scale, whereas in the west or other places, maybe you can be a little bit of a cowboy. Is, is there anything to that? Or is that just a stereotype? I, I, I don't think so, man. If you, if you again look at the current uh, uh, situation, you know, when we talk about East and West, um, mm. obviously the, the, the East, um, or maybe obviously in Asia, things are more cowboy than, than, than what you see in US, Gordon, am I right? Well, because, 
you know, you know, it's, I, I, I guess I was painting with a broad brush. So I, I think in, I think in Singapore and Japan, it's probably not that cowboy. Maybe in South Korea also. I think in China, if you got the right connections, you can be as cowboy as you want. Nah, it's, it's all it's all cowboy, man. It's all cowboy. I give you a all few cowboy. examples. Okay. All, all, all are cowboys. In, in China, let's not talk about it. Is is um, is is a lot of the leading exchanges right now in in, in the current environment. You know, uh, are, are Chinese base or Chinese link, right? Um, um, cowboy, as in you know, they are not allowed to to do crypto uh, related work. You know, within China. But as you know, a lot of the Chinese companies register themselves in Singapore, right? right. And then there are a lot of uh, Singapore blockchain companies all of, the, all, of, all of the sudden. And then, of course, they are all fake because they, one, they do not have an office. Um, they, they say that they are from Singapore, but you ask them about different things, they do not know about it. So, so it's, it's, it's already very cowboy, you know. And then if you look at the South Korean market as well, um, there's a lot of um, highly speculative coins that are in the market. You know, you can get very high pumps and of course, very steep dumps you know, within, within South Korea. So it's, it's a lot so more cowboy. You really are an outlier. You're, you're not just implementing what's natural for your environment. Your, your environment is a little bit chaotic and rule breaking like everywhere else. And you're kind of standing away from the crowd and taking a, a maybe not regulator friendly, but regulator communicative approach. Yeah, maybe, yeah. That's interesting, okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, I guess we're, I'm, I'm glad. And I'm glad he's on the show. This is cool. <laughs> All right, so I, I ended up with a, a bunch that are, Sandra, you're yeah. pursuing. Yeah, maybe it's good because I'm also fascinated because I, I said in the introduction that Andy is not only a serial entrepreneur, but he's mm -hmm. also an author. And Andy, I, I just want the audience uh, maybe to give some insights on uh, your book because you wrote a, a bestseller book, uh, which went all, 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 all over the place. Maybe you can share a little bit on, on that, how, the, how you came to the idea of starting a book or writing, writing a book, publishing it and bringing it to the, to the market. Um, so, so what happened was um, back in 2018, you know, we already mooted the idea on, uh, on a book that is more future looking, you know, forward looking and so forth. Then my, my good friend, Professor uh, Park uh, from Yonsei uh, University, you know, uh, I supported her in, in, in a lot of her, her work uh, within South Korea. Um, she's also a common friend uh, with me and Sander as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we, we started to talk about a book, you know. So, so long story short, you know, um, uh, the, the biggest uh, South Korean publisher, Kyobo Books, came, came to us and said, hey, can we publish your book? I said, yeah, let's, let's do that. So that's how the book is uh, given birth. And the content within the book is um, very much a future looking. You know, we are talking about uh, blockchain revolution 2030, which is uh, 10 years from now. Um, what, what we see back then um, is how quickly the, this technology is, is adopted and, and what are some of the pain points that they, they will solve, um, you know, du during this, uh, this, this decade. But, but like I've mentioned again uh, to Gordon over the phone call, um, many of these uh, 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 processes, you know, that this uh, technology, technology processes has been uh, quickened, you know, things are a lot more faster. The, the whole the, the, the digital realm has, uh, has, has, um, has changed uh, a lot, you know, because of, uh, of this COVID-19. So I, I see that it's, the, it's a very plus point. At least I think, you know, in order to reach the kind of a goal that we have uh, ambition, you know, in 2030, uh, I think it has shortened by at least five years, you know, in terms of uh, adoption, in terms of how, how this whole digital process uh, from, from how the money uh, is, is uh, how the whole financial system is, is going to change, how industry 4.0 is going to kick in, you know, with the, uh, with the help of blockchain um, is, is, going, is, is going to be a lot faster. So, so I, I, I am, um, I'm very happy that, uh, you know, things are a lot faster. And, and that also made me a little bit unhappy, you know, because then maybe we have to write another book, you know, a, a, a revised version of, of, of blockchain 
2030 because the vision has obviously changed. Mm -hmm. uh, and these last two years, you know, we are going in a very, uh, uh, very fast lightning speed, you know, in terms of uh, how things have changed, you know. So I, I do hope that. Sorry, So you're saying even before COVID, things kind of went in an interesting different direction. Am I hearing that correctly? Um, you, you look at it this way, two years ago when we first uh, um, uh, look at um, how, how, how this industry is going to evolve, um, to us, you know, uh, at least to me, uh, I, I see that the next 10 years, you know, uh, there are a few milestones that we are going to hit, you know, for adoption. But, but that, back then, uh, one of the points that, that I have voiced, I have mentioned is that a lot of these traditional companies are very reluctant to make changes to their current system because they are very comfort comfortable, man. You know, right. they do not really care about uh, 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 what e-commerce can bring to them. You know, they felt that e-commerce is not going to benefit too much. Yeah. You know, e-money is not going to benefit too much. You know, but things have changed, you know, ever since uh, 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 COVID-19, actually. And things have speeded up a lot more, uh, in, in my opinion. Um, the companies are trying to accept how, how the whole digital world is going to help them, you know, when, when, when they are even coping, coping, you know, with their F&B business and so forth in Singapore, they have changed, you know. Because Singapore is like, example, I just quote, quote Singapore uh, uh, just, just, just for the discussion's sake. You know, Singapore is very small, you know, the, 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 the whole delivery service like uh, Uber Eats, uh, uh, Grab Eat and all those things is, is not doing very well. You know, uh, all those McDonald's uh, 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 delivery services are not doing very well because Singapore is small, delivery fee is expensive, the, the manpower fee is high. You know, all these things didn't really kick off, you know. So when, when COVID came about, everything is, you know, suddenly all those uh, traditional companies become, uh, they are forced to go online, you know. So, so by forcing all these uh, companies online and look at um, how to make their business and make their money online, mm -hmm. um, they will then think of how to make this connection a lot safer. You know, then the blockchain's, a uh, 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 mechanism come into the picture. They they are more willing to look at how 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 this uh, this technology layers can help them, right? So we create the trust level. We create the trust layer, and 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 since then, you know, uh, in my earlier uh, conversation, again, you know, companies are more open to listen to some of the things that we have to offer, and how we can. Um, make use of this technology uh, onto their currency legacy systems. You know, like, like Gordon asked just now as well, you know, do, do, you, do you think that, you know, you should, uh, um, you know, get rid of their current system and then everything blockchain, you know, I, I think you'll be screwed, you know, to be, to be really frank, you know. So some of these companies, they spend a lot of money on, on SAPs or on, on, on different big brands and so forth. You know, some could be in millions of dollars, you know. Uh, if you ask them to, to throw away that system and then use something that is not very much proven, you know, they will be very worried, you know. So, again, if you, if, if you look at uh, some of the speeches that I've made in 2018, you know, I always put in, in, this, in this aspect where they should work together. You know, they could, you could open up a, a layer, you know, to make sure that blockchain can be in, 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 in place. You know, but not replacing the whole system. Because right in the beginning, 201718, you know, you have seen a lot of cowboys out there trying to tell people, change the system, use my blockchain. And most of them are screwed, right? And 90% and of those companies have disappeared. You know, so, so let's be more practical and you know, keep the current system, you know, and then use blockchain in, 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 a, in a modular manner. So that you know, people can accept us a lot better. If not, they will see us as crazy guys, you know, running around telling people about block this and block that, and and then we are not going anywhere, you know. So, so step by step, uh, people are opening up, companies are opening up, um, governments are opening up. Uh, but of course, you know, as as we as we move along, 
the 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 bad the very bad actors, the scams, the the Ponzi scheme guys, they are also opening up. So we have we have a very big catch up game to to play, you know, as a as 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 early uh, adopters uh, for for cryptocurrency. So this at least at least this is how I look at things, you know. So if you come out with the second edition of your book called Blockchain Blockchain Twenty Thirty Five, this is yeah. something we did not pre discuss. I'm just going to throw it at you. So suppose you come out with a new version, Blockchain Twenty Thirty Five. You know, expanded and revised. What what new chapter do you include in that book that was not in Blockchain Twenty Thirty, which is the title of your existing book? Wow, well, that is a good question, actually. Um, and it's I, a total I, curveball, and sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. It's, it's good to do that. Like, like I've said, you know, not, nothing is scripted. I have nothing on my hands. You know, I, I don't go for script, scripted stuff. So yeah. what I really, what, what really, um, um, what really make me, really make me think is um, I would really love to add a portion about the practical aspect of things. You know, two things, maybe the more practical more practical aspect of things like um um you know how 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 we can really uh, adopt blockchain a lot faster you know given car the, the current situation that's that's number one you know mm. i want to share with them very particular things how 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 you could use the technology in in your current system you know very straightforward kind of things then the second thing i would love to to talk about would be the term that we always use uh, decentralized you know how how we could look at redefining the decentralization. You know the word that I, I use sometimes would be redecentralize. You know, it sounds weird, you know, from an English uh, 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 perspective. But I think that there is a need to look at how we redefine uh, decentralization. You know, is you know it's not about screwing everyone, screwing the banks, screwing the government. Uh, screwing your president, you know, and that's decentralization. You know, I, I mean, I, you know, I come from Singapore. Um, you know, a lot of things are, are, are somewhat pre-planned. You know, we, we, we you know, you know, I, I don't want to say too much on politics stuff, but, but I, I just want to make sure that you know the word decentralize uh, uh, can offer a new meaning to 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 all the to all the people in the industry and also to people who wants to get into the industry because you know some, some of my friends you know uh, when they google my profile on google they say decentralized hey, are you going to th are you going to throw throw your government away you know are you going to decoup or whatever you know and and form a new government you know i say no 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 we are not doing things like that you know we we just want to make sure that things are fair you know you you have your own voice uh, and 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 blockchain is the technology that enable you to do that you know so 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 that, that that's that's how i see it though i mean maybe adding a, a, a bit more to the book would, would would be things that are more practical because if you look at the book again although it's in korean um we talk about uh, how the medical industry is going to evolve how the supply chain is going to evolve you know how we could uh, do a lot more tracing and tracking and so forth uh, using the the the, the this uh, this layer this technology you know, but but I, I just felt that all these things are very uh, future looking. Some of which, uh, some of which are not practical because uh, because it's not easy to to really implement uh, uh, tra traceability from uh, point A to point Z. You know, so I, I want to offer. Uh, oh, sorry, let me jump in one second. One thing you said about five minutes ago that really caught my ear, and I don't think I've heard anyone else say it before, is you made this link between COVID is driving digitization and sort of a reformatting of supply lines. So it, you know, we were already kind of going there anyway, but it, it put it on steroids. And because transactions are no longer face-to-face, -face, because they're all remote, because they're all digital, or they're all drone related, or they're all automated, provenance, tra tracking and tracing, assumes a, just a massive importance beyond what it already has. Because when you can't verify something physically, you, 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 you need something that's trustworthy. So the idea of embedding, so I love the idea that COVID is driving the need for verifiable provenance and blockchain solution. And absent COVID pushing this process, it, yeah. it would have happened, but not yet. 
I think that's would be slower. Would be a lot slower. Right, it would be a lot slower. But, but maybe also things that weren't practical when you wrote blockchain 2030 or were kind of forward thinking because of COVID, it's like, pardon my friends, you know, screw forward thinking. We need this now. I need to know that this vaccine for my kid because I can't see the doctor anymore. All I'm doing is, you know, I'm doing a Zoom meeting where I have a needle and give my own kid a vaccine. Doctor, am I doing this right? I, I need to know without a doubt that that's not a deep fake. I need to know without a doubt that that vaccine is correct. I need to know without a doubt that it hasn't expired. So maybe now all of a sudden it just became magically practical. So that that's a, a pushback it, it, maybe or a comment, but go ahead. It, it is, it is. Um, let, let's look at, um, uh, I, I wear different hats, you know. So, from a more investment standpoint, you you have you, you then notice there's a there's a trend. Uh, one, you know, I, I'm also the chairperson of an esports um, association in South Korea, cool. so I see a lot of uh, game. I related... would love you. That's all he does. <laughs> so, so there's a there's a lot of uh, games related investment that that went in because, you know, now that everyone is locked at home, you know, games become more vibrant, right? Yeah. Then, then you look at you look at the other sectors uh, that that grew fairly quickly was the health related kind of the businesses, you know. So, so I, I do believe that uh, blockchain can help uh, the healthcare industry a lot more in terms of uh, uh, medical records, uh, in terms of uh, how you could uh, um, how you could uh, make sure that you know this vaccine is from the real source, you know, uh, you know. Is from uh, US. It's not from you know. It's from Trump or whatever. You know. You need to know where where this this uh, this this uh, medicine is from, right? So you see, from an investment standpoint, there are a lot of uh, new money that went into games, uh, medical, uh, supply chain uh, uh, related ones as well. Because right now, um, almost um, I would dare say seventy percent of the business businesses are conducted online. Um, whether it's uh, whether it's a uh, food business, whether mm. it's medical, uh, whether it's um, um, actually anything, everything is on steroid right now. So, is it is a very good chance for blockchain to grow because of the current situation. And if you look at other things from uh, from a government standpoint, you know they are looking at how to. Um, um, not sure if I could say this in detail, but. You know how how you could look at the digital identity a lot more uh, on steroid on blockchain, um, and 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 a, and a few governments that I know are really working very deeply on 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 such uh, on such initiative because they want to know uh, who is the one transacting. Mm -hmm. You know who who you know is is an advanced layer of uh, how we look at KYC AML uh, uh, so forth. So they want to know who exactly is transacting all this uh, cryptocurrency. They could, of course, uh, get back some tax or, or get back, you know, tax, tax them for for, the, for some of the profits that they make. Um, yeah. Also, most importantly, they also want to make sure that a lot of all these online transactions are are being traced and accountable. You know, of course, then 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 our our dear friends who are into to total decentralization or into privacy coin. And so far, we say, "Hey, screw you, man!" And the, you know, you know, we 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 do not want the government to trace, you know. So, so, so a lot of these things will happen, you know. A lot of this uh, fight will will have will, will happen. But ultimately, sometimes I will tell those friends of mine that ultimately you still need to cash out, right, man? Right. So when you cash out, there's there's still going to be trace, you know, everywhere. So, so I think I think well, that, right that, now. If, if we completely burn the bridge behind us and we're operating purely in crypto, mm -hmm. then maybe crypto is the cash and you don't cash out of it. But I, I think that, that I think that's I think what you're saying, and I, I unfortunately unfortunately I agree that's not a short term practical thing, and I don't yeah. even know whether it's even a long term practical thing. Uh, long term, I think there is a, there is a big chance that that things will change actually. Um, um, that that's where the total decentralization portion is going to work peer to peer and so forth, but but in order for that to really happen, you know, there must be a there must be a really big change, something even bigger than than COVID nineteen, that that's going to strike going to strike us big, and 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 the banks disappear all, all of a sudden, and then and then 
oh, so sorry, man, we can only use Bitcoin kind of thing. But I don't see that it's going to happen in, in, in the short term. So we, as in at least us, or at least myself, we must as well, you know, talk to the government more, let them know what we, 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 we can really do, you know, and, you know, perhaps in 10 years down the road, you know, things might really change, you know, slowly, step by step, surely it's going to happen, you know. We should try to make this step by step. You know, maybe right now we change 20% of, 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 of all this, uh, of the, the whole financial system. And I think mm -hmm. that is going to be a big milestone for a lot of us. Yeah, agreed. So yeah. let, let, me let me shift the conversation a little bit. So you, you, you've been an investor for a long time and evidently you've been successful. And it, it seems like you get involved in an area like medical, you learn about something new, you kind of roll over um, to new areas that catch your interest. You've had this interest in blockchain for a while. And I think I recall that you're not just an investor, you're sort of an incubator or advisor function as well. What, what catches your eye? And then how do you approach them and what do you do? Like where's your focus and then how do you execute? Um, okay, uh, that, that, is, that is very different. So. So like I've mentioned, I always, I, I wear uh, many different hats. So um, uh, Sander will know, you know, I have, uh, you know, we, we of course um, incubate some good projects. We put in our own money. You know, we also look at how uh, we can uh, provide liquidity, you know, market make plus, plus real money, you know, not just market make coins, you know, there's no liquidity. Um, right. We also have media companies and so forth. Is, is more of an ecosystem. So what we usually do, you know, as an investor for some of these companies is that if we see that this particular company is, is genuine, sincere, you know, and of course what they do is going to solve some issues, uh, uh, close up some gaps in the industry. Um, we, we will put in our own money, time. Uh, we create the, the, the trust element because a lot of all these guys with good concept, they are not very trustworthy. Just to be real honest, they have a good concept, but they are not trustworthy. You can't find them online. You know the things that they talk didn't make too much sense. You know, but they are good at heart. You know, they are trying to change the world. They might be a technologist who can't speak well. You know, or they can be uh, a, a real good marketing guy. You know, but 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 didn't have much credibility. So what we do is that we 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 invest in the in the project. We invest in the people. You know, we create a good brand for them. And then um, we also do the, the community work, the, the retail investors, the professional investors, we bring them together. And then we make sure that the project is good. Then for us, we are very straightforward. You know, we, we, are, we are not sharks. You know, we are not there to take a big chunk of, uh, of their tokens or of their equity and then we run away. We, 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 we don't do that. In fact, the Sander would know, you know we, we, we buy the tokens uh, in the secondary market. You know, we do not ask them for free tokens and then, and then because then there will be, there will be a conflict of interest, you know, so, so that's how we do it. You know, good projects get, get the funds from us, uh, from me. Then if the funds are not big enough for their vision, we have our own friends as well that can put in the money. And then from there, again, we grow, grow the company. And typically, what we do for, for the blockchain company is uh, 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 once they get themselves listed, we will just, uh, we will just uh, uh, let, let go of the project very much. Because we, we, we let don't... Let go of your sort of guiding role. Let, let go of the guiding for, some, some of, uh, for most of the cases because after the hand-holding for 6 to 12 months, they would already know what to do. And then in some parts or, or in some of our agreement, we also let go our equity. We also let go of the tokens. So it depends, you know, a lot of different structures that we, we operate, but we just don't want to burden them. Uh, and we also don't want to uh, create more risk for ourselves because when we are holding their hands, we know exactly what's going to happen, you know, and, and our reputation is, is, is on the table, you know. So we make sure that things are good, you know. Then once we, we sort of let go a, a fair bit, you know, then it's up to them already. You know, then on a, on, a, on a safer aspect, sometimes we will let go of our equity as well. So it's going to be a win-win. And we are not greedy sharks, you know. So once we get our, our returns, fine, you know, fair enough. We, we, we make our move, 
you know. And, and you're, you're, you're using the royal we. Who, who is the we and we? Um, okay, so when I use the word we, because uh, we, we on, on, on our end, you know, we have partners, you know. Um, we have uh, our own team of uh, staff that is on our payroll as well. So all of us, to, to, at least to me, they are all partners. You know, I don't think, you know, I, those who know me in real life, you know, I, I don't see them as uh, employees or workers or, or whatever. They are all partners because they are part of the ecosystem. You know, they, they contributed their expertise to make things work. You know, we, we, we as in me, you know, I, I could have contributed the money aspects of things and my experience uh, aspects of things drives the whole uh, uh, organization to where I want. But, but when we use the word we, is because I can't work alone, man. You know, we, we have to use uh, people with different expertise like yourself, like a, a lawyer, you know, you have to work with the lawyers, you know. Yeah, I, I didn't even ask for the plug, but you gave it to me. So, you know, you're welcome yes. back on the show anytime. <laughs> Thanks, man. So, so we, we really work with, with some of the top lawyers and so forth, but, but we work with them on, 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 uh, on, on different aspects, you know, from a law perspective, if there's an m and involved or if there's a certain deal that's involved, we get the lawyers in. But for, for my own personal work with government, you know, some people will ask me, and, and Gordon also rightfully pointed out, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a trained uh, government uh, law, law person. Um, why am I, I doing this? I said that. that was kind of a compliment. <laughs> but but then again, the question is, why did I do that? You know, it's because sometimes you know, um, when when you talk to lawyers, you know, they they have their own agenda, you know, and 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 of course the government has their own agenda as well. So to me, sometimes if I bring a lawyer into the into the picture, sometimes there's always some form of conflict, you know, because they 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 see some things that we don't see from from a commercial aspects, and then mm. and then they also. Lawyers in, in, in particular, the professionals, they do not see, uh, they see a lot of uh, pitfalls as in, oh, you know, you can't do this because it's gray. You know, if you want to do this, you know, what you should do and so forth. You know, I was involved in an STO project, you know, uh, where you need to get a capital market license, a RMO license, a registered market operator license, so forth and so on. But when you have the lawyer in place, you will then realize that, hey, a lot of these things can't be done, man. You know, because it's securities. But to us, it's more straightforward because if we do this on the chain, hey, who's going to fault us, right? So yeah. sometimes, you know, you have to find really good lawyers who are, uh, who knows what we are talking about and how you can value add. And at the same time, you know, we need them to make sure that we, we, we are on the right track and not going against the, the, the law. So again, this kind of lawyer, hard to find, but I, I have encountered a few, you know, in, in these uh, past few years, you know, hopefully Gordon is one of them. I've not talked to him about that in detail. Well, and, 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 now, now I have to comment. So the, I, 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 I don't know if I brought this up last time. I, I had actually stopped practicing law because I found it a little bit boring and started a cloud computing company. Just, and then in 2014, I discovered Bitcoin, uh, thanks to Pavel Kravchenko, who's been on our show. And its draw was so powerful. I didn't understand the first time I was exposed, but once I did understand it, straw was so powerful that I did the unthinkable. And after having escaped from law, went back to law because I needed to work in this area. And it wasn't, of course I saw a commercial opportunity, but it was because law suddenly became fascinating. It's weird how something that had been boring magically became fascinating. And like it became fun to read agreements. <laughs> Wolf and I, and actually Mark have been working on an endless number of agreements on the project that we're all involved in. I can't say it's quite fun because you know, but it's like not bad. It's interesting. The, I think I think to be a company and to be a lawyer in this area, especially to be a lawyer, means you have to be comfortable taking on. And you need to be comfortable taking on calculated strategic risk. So you don't do something. You don't not do something because there's a risk involved. Okay, there's risk involved in everything in life. There's risk involved in staying home. There's risk involved in going outside. You just need to correctly appraise the level of risk versus the reward. And then if you're the lawyer, it's your job not to make the decision for the client, but to correctly articulate that to the client so them, show them how they can maximize their upside, minimize their downside, and let them make the decision. You don't, you don't say no. 
You know, I, I hate these large firms that will say, no, you can't do that. Sure you can, you just need to understand the risk. Yeah, so, yeah. So on, on, yeah. on one hand, I do agree with you, but on the other hand, it gets really <laughs> irritating as, as an investor because we are just beating around the bush and nothing is going to be done. So again, the, the right lawyer is very important. The, 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 I think the contracts are not so, I mean, it's a standard thing, man. Lawyers are, are good at that. But I think sometimes it's, it's good to get the, the legal opinion from very, um, very sound lawyer that can mm-hmm. help make the right business case. I think that, that, would be the, that would be the main aim because those who are good at that, um, most of them should be disbarred. Okay, because because they have crossed the line. We're gonna edit that out. So I, I do I do legal opinions on tokens often, and part of that is if I see it's going the wrong direction, I, I slam the brakes and go, guys, need to rework the model. Here's how. Don't worry, we we, know, will, we, will, we have a chance. We will have chance. We will have chance. The, okay, so the. Where are we going with all this? So, okay, so when, you, when you're the we, it's, I'm going to kind of route it back in there. The, the we is a group of collaborative professionals, and it sounds like some other angel type investors that where you guys ad hoc work together to see whether or not something is interesting and then participate as a group if you, if, if the stars align. It's yep. not a formal, it's not a formal angel group like uh, Michael Herbert has. We, uh, okay, so, so put it this way, we, we used to ha- have a very formal uh, uh, venture group, um, but because of the directions and, 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 and how we want to uh, uh, get our returns, you know, we, we, we sort of uh, make it an unofficial one right, right now at this current moment. But when we talk about we, it's not about just the, the guys who are providing the money, all right, because money is just one portion. Uh, what we built uh, from, from, from my end is that we built a certain ecosystem within our group. So we have, the, of course, the angel aspect. You know, if I, if I can't handle the, the, the kind of investments, uh, my, my friends is definitely going to come in. All right. Mm-hmm. Whether it's even if it's a PE fund, we, we have friends who are, who are, who are there you know, that, that can participate. No problem at all. But when we say we, you know, we, we look at a few other things. One, you know, we look at building the right trust, building the right kind of PR work, marketing work, the right kind of business connection. When we talk about we, all right, and then again when we talk about we, you know, we talk about the the community building aspects of things. How how you're going to uh, in in the right full manner, you know, round up all these different retail investors, professional mm-hmm. investors into the pool. That's more of a uh, investment relations kind of uh, kind of work. You know, again, it's, it's, it's a separate company. And then, uh, again, another we that we talk about is that once everything is all aligned, where are we going to do the kind of uh, uh, market-making kind of work that is, you know, that, that is very much needed, you know? Because a lot of guys in the, in the industry, when we talk about market-making, you know, well, uh, they would just say, okay, I'll just watch the trades and all those things, but it's not going to work, you know? It's not. It's not going to work overnight. You can be a top ten or top top twenty coin if you if you if you really want to you know work work your ass off just to get all these watch trades and so forth done done properly, right? But those are not not very useful. So as an early stage uh, angel investor uh, kind of uh, mentality that we have is that we provide the liquidity as well, you know. So then we will have a group of guys who look at the liquidity aspects and also um, the market make aspect because. A lot of, again, a lot of these uh, companies right now, you know, jokes aside and so forth, they talk, they, they, tell, they tell themselves that they are a fund, F-U-N-B. But to me, they are just fun, F-U-N. Because one, they, they are a crypto fund that has no money. Mm-hmm. Two, they, 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 if, if they are a fund, you know, and they can't generate that kind of money, then they are not a fund. Because it is a very volatile kind of a situation. You know, a fund would come, come in and do a fundraising, then that is a joke man. because ultimately if you have a million in the bank you know you could get a 40 percent return right mm-hmm. so why do you need a why do you need more more money you need more clients right so so for us uh these are all different entities mm-hmm. and then and then um we look at 
you know, from, from the very early stages, uh, companies you know, where we can invest, we can put in our technology uh, a bit to them. Um, from technology to marketing to the money aspect, that is the way that we talk about, you know. So, so I, I, I don't usually go out and say that it's, no, it's only me, Andy, alone because I can't work, you know. I, I work with uh, Sander a lot as well you know, on, on, uh, on different aspects of things from uh, investor relations. You know, I could be working with Gordon very soon, you know, on, on law-related stuff as well, you know, because right now our law-related law things, you know, we, we uh, second it to, uh, of course, a, a law firm and a, a law group, you know, to, to, to work on some of our things. So again, you know, that aspect, I don't have any uh, uh, equity on it. You know, I, I don't have any shares on it, just purely a client relationship. But the rest of the weave, you know, from the technology bit to the marketing bit to the uh, to the to the money aspect, um, the the we is that I have equity in them. So so that that is the we that we talk about right now. Got it. Okay, I like that. There, there, there's there's one subject I want to hit before we go to the open mic section for one final thing. Um, during our pre-talk, it was I think Senator and I both found it really interesting that you commented that. It's not that China is pulling ahead of the U.S. and the West with the financial system. It's that they're already way ahead. And you brought up the example of QR codes and the new uh, central bank currency. Can you talk about what's going on, how it got that way, and how this interface with blockchain and crypto? Um, I, I think we, we should start from uh, how, how China is like. You know? um, um, China has skipped the, the whole era of a credit, you know. Places like US or even in Singapore, we talk about credit cards and all these things. But if you look in, in China, a lot of them are operating, buying things, uh, paying for everything using their WeChat Pay or Alipay account. You know, um, and and again, if you look at if you look at things deeper, a lot of their things are digitized, right? Their money is digitized, right? Their their big Alibaba is digitized. Their their delivery system is state of the art. You know, they can give you a next day, next hour delivery. You know, you can order a, a bottle of Coke, you know, and they can appear at your house. You know, you can go to a restaurant. They have no menu. You know, just sit down, you scan the QR code. Everything you pay, everything, uh, everything using the, 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 the QR code and the phone apparently is, is quite COVID safe because there's no, there's minimum in interaction, right? So when you look at the blockchain aspect of things, as, as you all know, a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, blockchain companies, uh, innovators are from China. You know, all the big names that 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 that, that we all know, they are, they may be speaking English, but you know they are from China. Yeah, not not the accent, but you know the kind of mentality, the kind of uh, the kind of work, the the kind of uh, the kind of uh, uh, company structure that they have. You know, you know that they are from China, and there's nothing wrong to be to, to be from China because a lot of my friends are from China, and they are the they are the innovators. You know, they dare to make it happen. Mm -hmm. They dare to push the agenda across. And and with the, the the new central bank currency and so forth, although it has nothing to do with blockchain, totally, I mean, they, they have something to do with blockchain, but there's nothing to do with cryptocurrency. But well, if you look at- There's a center, right? But it, it's not secured. It, 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 it's not using crypto economics to secure consensus. I mean, it's just a big database. Yes, you 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 are right. You are right. But but then again, if you look at the long term long term uh, perspective of things, yeah, um, U.S. U.S. there's there's almost not that advanced in terms of financial system. In Singapore, it's also not not that advanced. You know, there was a there, there was a there was a, something really funny. You know, in in uh, uh, that I I have I had a chat with a professional. You know, they say, oh Singapore, ah Singapore is the top uh, 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 financial hub. You know, everything. That we have are all digitized. Then ask them, can you pay your noodle using Bitcoin? Say, no, 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 we can't. But I tell you, you know, all our money are digitized because you can use uh, internet banking. I was tell, I tell them, hey man, it's not internet banking that, that makes things di di digital, you know. And and the, the sad part is in Singapore, we still have things like checkbook. Do you, do you still have a checkbook, Gordon? I do, but it, it's from like 1980. <laughs> no, but do you still use it? You know, do you still cut a check? Fantastically rarely, every okay. once in a while, but very, very rare. Everything is online. I tell you, three years ago, 
or maybe even now, Singapore people, they are still cutting checks. In South Korea, I think the young ones, they would not know what is a check. Mm. All right. And sooner or later, we will shift very much digitally. And again, the, coming back to the, the, the topic about China and so forth, because China has a head start, you know, on how they use their, their wallets and so forth, in the event they shift into a crypto mode, it's almost immediate. It's a nationwide adoption, not, not, a, not, not, not a small company adoption, it's a nationwide adoption. Imagine there's a, there's a, there's a Bitcoin equivalent in, in China. They can just convert it anytime they want, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, really, so, really the, the UI and the network is already there. We're, we're kind of talking about swapping in a infrastructure component that the users don't even necessarily see. Yep. I mean, they all have WeChat, they all have Alipay. So, yep. Interesting. The, and then the, in Union Pay, I guess, the, the, the big three are WeChat, Ali, and Union. Is that right? Uh, Union Pay, I, like I mentioned the other day, Union Pay is like a payment gateway. You know, um, they are like a Visa Master or Amex, but they are Union Pay. You know, so it's from, it's, it's, is is a very big is a very big uh, uh, payment uh, gateway provider from uh, from from China, um, and and all these things are part of the infrastructure. You know, anytime they want to shift into a full uh, digital mode or full crypto mode, they are already, you know, mm -hmm. already because in in Singapore, you know, we we still talk about you know give, paying using credit card, you know, mm -hmm. but put it this way, in China, this, you know, this just all wallets. You know, everything is through your phone, you know. So they, they definitely has a, a higher, faster head start than a lot of us. And it, and it is also, I guess, we talked about this, a little bit of a psychological difference. At least in the US, almost all purchases are done on credit. And then you pay what you owe plus interest, if any, at the end of the month. Whereas I, I gather the wallet function on these apps is essentially a debit card. So you're, you're yep. spending what you have. And yep. if you don't have the money in your wallet, there's nothing to spend. It's a little bit yeah. of a psychological difference also. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very different. You spend what you have. And then um, the, the cool part about them is that if you look at the WeChat app, you know, uh, in China, you can buy ETF, you know, you can get, get uh, 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 interest, you know, when you put it in a certain uh, investment uh, uh, link wallet. You know, it's very much like, like crypto, man. You know, it's just like you have the same app, you have a staking function, all right? And then you can have an investment function where you can buy some uh, ETF based uh, on crypto or you can buy some gold link uh, crypto co crypto products and so forth. So my, my cat's into this topic, by the way. No problem. I, I guess uh, your cat likes me. No? I, yeah, I, I yeah. I so so, so the, the kind of adoption would be, would be superly fast. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and again, and again, I want to emphasize this. Um, uh, from a government standpoint, they are already looking at how crypto can be combined with their current financial systems. Mm -hmm. You know, because they want to capture the, the the crypto market. And and when I say they, I'm not talking about just one or two. You know, there are more than a handful of government who believe in that have not adopted but they are planning to do it. So in my humble opinion- and I'm sorry, to be clear, they're blockchain or crypto? They're looking uh, at cryptocurrency adoption? When, when, when we talk about blockchain adoption, all right, mm -hmm. most, in fact, all governments are open. It's just a matter of how am I going to do it? Right. I'm referring to crypto adoption, huh. all right? I'm referring to crypto adoption. Definitely, I, I have no, I have no uh, talks with uh, U.S. government on, 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 on within my radar. But yeah. some of the smaller countries, or some of the more advanced countries, they are thinking of uh, adopting blockchain, and then how to adopt crypto in their space as well. So th this would be a very big uh, a game changer, and this spins off. And goes back to what I was always saying, you know, uh, on, on Twitter, uh, and also to some of my own friends, is that those bigger crypto companies mm -hmm. must start to look 
at their governance and compliance matter. And they should do it ASAP. And, and again, coming back to the point 15 minutes ago that I said, they, and they should uh, look for independent professionals to look at how they can quickly adopt this, not, not just going to professional lawyers and so forth. Because again, the kind of uh, output that they will get from, from professionals only is very different from the more practical approach that some of us are, 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 are sharing you know, in, in the space. So there must be a very good balance. So bigger blockchain or crypto companies must start to look at this because in order for them to grow, apart from the B2B businesses that they are already pushing, you know, like uh, XRP and so forth, you know, they push a lot of uh, cross-border uh, 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 remittance and payment and so forth. Um, they should also look at how they can help from a, from a government or a G2G kind of a, a, a project or G2G kind of a relationship because government relations will then become a very crucial thing for these blockchain companies to grow. The smaller ones, they can wait, all right? The very small ones, they can close it down because there's no value, all right? And of course, the Ponzi ones, they can just definitely close down ASAP, right? Before anyone gets hurt. But the bigger ones and the medium, uh, the bigger medium ones, they have to look at compliance. They have to look at government relations because that will be one of the key things that is going to excel them from where they are. You know, again, I mentioned this in, 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 in I have nothing against professionals, all right? But, you know, I also put this on Twitter that, you know. I'm not here holding the lawyer flag. <laughs> And I know, man. So the other profession I'm going to touch on are the, the bankers, you know. Yeah. So I, I would love to say that the bankers are very elitist and so forth. You know, they have a very good mindset, well, uh, very good knowledge of the financial system and so forth. But, but my take is at this current state, you know, we should try to avoid bringing too many of them in, into, the, into the space, you know. Because once they get into the space, then you will turn back to the old traditional system, right? No matter what they tell you, Mm -hmm. In the conversation, you know that they are in the blood, the old traditional guys, the old traditional finance people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that they are bad, but it's not very good for the crypto scene. Again, um, looking at general people, you know, like uh, ourselves and so forth, it's also good to bring in some higher caliber people into the industry, you know, not, 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 not just, uh, all, you know, sometimes, you know, in some of our private conversation, you know, we we say that oh you know why are they hiring these uh, very skimpy dress uh, ladies you know in the in the in, in the company you know uh, and some of the things they say didn't make sense I mean there are some ladies in 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 the, in the chat right now you know uh, so but I'm not talking about them but you know some are really crazy you know some of the things they say and so forth it, it provides a very bad perception that you know all these blockchain guys are they do not know what they're talking about you know once they talk to us they talk about TPS. I mean, what the hell is TPS? You get what I mean? So we just got to be more practical, more natural, you know, getting the high, higher caliber people in to talk about the real, the real work, you know, not just the fluff. So that would be a very big uh, game changer in the shorter term, you know. So oh let's, let's see. Let's see. I love it. Um, Sandra, if it's okay with you, yeah. we're, I think we'll go to the open mic section. Yeah, because, because there are already a lot of good questions. I saw that Marco was already putting in some, some questions. And we also have um, Professor Wolf, Kyle, here. So maybe it's good to start off with him first. So, Professor, if you can unmute yourself and maybe put in your camera. Professor goes first. Hi, Hello. Prof. Good morning. Uh, Hi, Wolf. One time uh, to talk. <laughs> Hello, Gordon. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you, Sandra. Um, Andy, great, great, uh, great pleasure meeting you. Uh, you touched on a lot of things, um, and I, I commend you on all you all you do. I really appreciate the way you're framing the, the need for professionalizing the crypto space. I've been suffering under this for what seven years now, uh, <laughs> so it's a little nuts in many ways. Um, but let's talk a little bit about innovation. So in North America, I think there is a perception that with the third generation of DAOs, DAOs are driving um, a lot of the innovation in the ecosystem. Um, I'm wondering if you could share your thoughts on innovation and where innovation and infrastructure products, decentralized infrastructure products 
are being built and how they're being built um, uh, in Asia? I know it's a broad question, but pick whatever you like, please. No, no problem, no problem. It's good, good to see new faces um, uh, um, right now. So I, I think um, we talk about very broad stroke in terms of uh, innovation. I think, I think right now, um, blockchain innovation uh, has, has been great. You know, you, you see a lot of good concepts, you know, uh, you see a lot of new projects that are, that are out there uh, looking at solving problems like uh, Ethereum gas, gas fee is very high right now. Um, there, are, there are new protocol, new Oracle, new layers, they are, they are, they are doing the work to help reduce uh, all, all this. You know, so to me, I think those are good innovation because they are trying to solve a problem that we are all facing. But, but the, other, the other big issue that I, I do face in Asia is that innovation and practical uh, uh, adoption is actually two separate matters. That is a very big misalignment, all right? Whenever we talk about innovation, you need to have the other end where people is going to use it, you know? If nobody is going to adopt this and you kept talking about innovation, that is never going to work. So. So coming back to the point where, 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 where from a government standpoint, again, we talk a fair bit about Industrial 4.0 and how blockchain is going to be, be part of it and play a bigger role to help the different machines and machine, you know, they talk to each other and, and, and speed up, speeding up the whole production and innovation cycle. But, but then again, you know, uh, a lot of our uh, friends in Asia in particular, they do not really look at uh, that 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 kind of a business. You know, they are looking at very big concepts. You know, they are looking at uh, you know concepts that are perhaps out of this world. You know, they are talking about one of them. They came to me and they talk about how we can build a satellite using blockchain uh, uh, and so forth. You know, I can show you the power, the investment that is uh, is a joke, man. But but again, you know, those are innovation, but. <laughs> You know, maybe that's 6G or something. I don't know how that works, you know, but I can again share the, the profile. Um, those are big innovation, you know, but if they, they focus on that kind of innovation into smaller things like what I talked about, you know, machine and machine kind of uh, trust, you know, they, they can build a very good portfolio and good money. So again, uh, I always say this, the practical versus innovation in Asia, especially, it has to be well balanced. If it's not balanced, Again, people look at us as a joke. Hey, blockchain guys are a joke, man. You know, that kind of thing. You know, we, 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 sometimes you do hear that because there are too many fluff in the market. Do you think that, and this is something that, that we've been thinking about for a while, do you think that the collective wisdom of leading investors in the space can help propel innovation forward. Meaning if there was an incentive design system where the leading people, the leading investors in crypto would have a, a, a governance design together to share together in investment proposals and in the evaluation of investment proposals with the sort of collective wisdom of the leading people. Is that a way to truly propel innovation or are you still seeing the risk of um, not being realistic here, yeah, that, that some things are getting funded that shouldn't have been funded because they're too overly ambitious and they will never be adopted. Again, then you have to see who are the leading investors that we talk about, you know, because I, I know of some leading investors who are putting money into very uh, not so leading projects, you know, um, because they have their own agenda. And then when we talk about a group of investors uh, coming together, that is also another risk that we have to uh, we have to partake, you know, because different investors have different kind of investment portfolio and risk. Some of them, they want to be the big brother, you know, they want the, the majority share and they want majority control and, and this is not going to work. So, so coming back to the traditional deal flow kind of uh, 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 ben venture companies, you know, where they, where, 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 where they did fairly well in the, in the, fish, the, the, the tech era. You know, they, 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 they are not exactly innovators. You know, they are all looking at the end results, which is how much money can I, can I make? 
you know, not everyone is a Bill Gates kind of thing. I mean, again, some people might 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 have a very have a very bad taste about what Bill has done and so forth. But but to me is, you know, if you are going to fund innovation, you are going to fund something really out of the box. You know, let's put the money part aside. But if you're talking about crypto, then you 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 have to then look at the 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 revenue aspects because in in the crypto space, most of the companies they do not really put the revenue uh, as a first priority. They put innovation and, and some, some kind of innovation or whatever as a first priority and they try to get as much money as they can from the secondary market and then from the listing. And these are not practical things that will drive them forward and it's non-sustainable. So the investors, uh, even like myself, uh, right now, again, you know, we are being very practical. We look at how we can uh, get possible returns. So it's a very contradicting kind of a uh, so kind of thing. This is great. Um, so what if I told you that there is a design that, that one might experiment with that would allow investors to act in their very self-interest and at the same time benefit the larger group of investors they're sh sharing interests with? Let's go. Let's try. Okay, we, we can take yeah, this yeah. Off, offline. Uh, Gordon knows what I'm talking about. Um, I mean, this, this is the, this <laughs> the way, you, 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 you both in the alumni speaker group. Yeah, um, yeah. good. Okay, good. Sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll drop off now. Thank you, Andy. I really appreciate your views. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> well, I wasn't showing you away. I'm just saying that's how you can connect easily. But, well, thank you for thank coming you along. <laughs> thank it. you. Okay. Marco is next. Uh, I, actually, yeah, I'm sorry. I know what Marco will talk Luke, about. Because Luke, Luke has to drop up also or maybe you're all just kind of pulling that routine so marco just hold tight uh luke oh sorry luke. hi luke how are you okay but go go for it luke i can't hear uh luke stokes um oh, he, he... i think luke left no no, no he's here he's just adjusting his uh, settings very interesting background man very interesting background behind him L L luke's the man all right luke Hey, uh, I, I'm, I, unfortunately, my mic is not seeming to be working, so I'm, I'm working with my settings here. Now you're, we can hear you. Now, now we can hear you, man. Yeah. Luke, huh? Luke we, we can hear you already, Luke. Excellent. All right, now it's working. Andy, yeah. great to meet you. Uh, it's always great to meet another uh, Twitter friend. We, we were yes. interacting I think, with CZ on Twitter a while back, and so it's great to see you in person. Yes, uh, hi, Luke. Related to identity and reputation. I'm really interested in blockchain solutions that can solve civil attack and be civil attack resistant. We'd like to do a lot of FIO address giveaways, a lot of token giveaways. And I see that as a really big problem that can be solved potentially with identity and reputation. And there's kind of a meme in the space that, you know, China is, is, is doing it wrong in terms of a very authoritarian way to control their citizens and population, right? Because they've kind of, with the WeChat approach, they've kind of locked everything down. So your entire digital life has to run through this single identity that the government gets to control as far as reputation goes. So I'm curious with your experience working with governments and specifically kind of what you've seen personally with what's going on in Asia related to identity and reputation, um, what are your thoughts on how the blockchain can potentially solve these in a way that still gives individuals self-sovereign control in a way that doesn't, you know, give over all the control to a government that might at some point turn against them and actually be hostile to their own interests? I think it's really important that we have solutions that aren't going to be used against us, you know, so I'm curious what you think about that. Oh, well, this is a very, this is a double H uh, sword kind of um, uh, thinking here, but, but, but let's go back to, to, to very practical things, all right? Like I've mentioned in the, in, in the chat, government are really looking at how the digital identity, reputation uh, is going to help them, all right? One very good example is uh, our medical records, all right? Uh, we, we technically, all the medical records belong to us, not the doctors, all right? And also not the government organization. Using the same analogy, uh, we, we, we in the, in collectively as a, as a group, when we talk to a government, we are trying to convince them that some of this data uh, can be on-chain. All right, all the data can be on-chain, but some of this data has a different layer of, uh, of a, maybe a different layer of secret key or different 
level of keys where you need a big consensus in order for you to draw down all those details. All right. So some government actually do agree with us because if things are centralized, there are also tendency where their own uh, uh, government staff or their own ministry people misuse those data. So cutting, making this a very short reply in, in some ways, um, governments are very pro uh, this concept. You know, they, they have the data, but actually they cannot have the full access of the data. And that is also something that people like us, you know, look, um, we believe that this, this kind of decentralization is going to help us grow. At the same time, a lot of this information are kept in a, in, in a treasure box or in a, in a certain manner where the government cannot go against us. So, so these are things that governments are already looking at. And, and again, um, I've mentioned about uh, uh, digital IDs and so forth. You know, a lot of all these uh, KYC uh, processes or AML processes that, that uh, uh, exchanges are adopting, they are, all very, um, they are all very loose in some manner, all right? Um, we, we have uh, friends who are working on a different KYC model and so forth that is slightly better than what we see in the exchanges right now, but it is still not good enough. So, um, so, so whatever data that we are trying to, to do, you know, uh, with the government or, or some government link projects, the government got to buy in to what we believe in. You know, in that kind of situation, I think our industry will grow a lot faster. And the KYC AML would then be very much like what you talk about in terms of the WeChat, how the Chinese government are coping with all this data, you know, very effectively, you know, but we minus away the fact that they can just use the data to kill us anytime or prosecute us anytime. So Chinese kind of a style is good because they, they dictate what they want. Everyone fall within this uh, sandbox. They confirm that this is the way to go and then they just go ahead with it. But right now we have a chance to change in other governments, other Asian governments, you know, they can do the same, you know, like what uh, Chinese uh, are doing, but we give them an additional box that is blocked by our dear blockchain technology to make sure that things are well in place, you know. So, so that, 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 that is actually a good plus point, you know. They can learn from China, they can learn a bit from Singapore, and then at the same time, they innovate, they tweak the model a bit more, and then that's it, man. That's, that, that would be the perfect scenario, just to be real honest about it. Excellent. Thank you. I'd love to continue the conversation offline as well as far as the different identity and reputation solutions you've looked at. I know Marco and Wolf and I have had a lot of conversations about that. I just ran into a new interesting one uh, yesterday and over the weekend called pseudo anonymous pairs. It's a really interesting way that every month you could prove your humanity with while staying anonymous. Uh, so there's a lot of really interesting projects out there. And I, I do think it's one of the most important innovations that the blockchain space can bring. But I also see others like, you know, Vinay Gupta and Ian Grigg and others that we've tried to interact with where they're just like, don't ever do this. It's a terrible idea. If you ever put your identity and reputation on a blockchain that's immutable forever, you're going to give totalitarians a control to destroy you. So it's a, it's a very challenging problem and I'd love to continue the conversation on it. Uh, unfortunately, I have another meeting I do have to go to, but uh, thank you so much uh, for having me on. No problem. Let's catch thank you, Marco, moment. for letting me skip ahead. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> up again. We appreciate it. And you guys can connect in the alumni speaker group, you know, both your telegrams are there. So awesome. Yes, yes, we know each other, man. Take, Take care, Andy. Take care. Bye, bro. All right, Marco, I, I, I appreciate your, your courtesy there. But now I'm handing you the, the microphone. Go for it. Hi, Marco. <laughs> How you doing, Andy? Uh, I've already uh, just uh, connected to you on LinkedIn because um, I definitely would like to take this uh, discussion possibly with Wolf and Luke as well uh, on identity down uh, a little further anyway, just to get your insight on this. Uh, everything you've said about uh, identity uh, from the positive side, I fully agree with. Uh, Luke and I have lots of discussions about whether or not digitized identity is uh, a license for totalitarian regimes to uh, take advantage of you. Uh, the model I'm proposing 
is actually designed to make that impossible. But we will see. <laughs> um, I guess uh, my, I guess one of the things that I, I I've been listening to everything you've gone on uh, through this conversation uh, around the idea that uh, you're better off. Uh, looking at your project from a how do I integrate this with legacy systems and legacy regulatory bodies um, versus, you know, going off into the Wild West. Um, and I fully agree with you, Asia is much more Wild West than uh, North America is. Uh, yeah. even, even in 2016, uh, I mean, you, one could argue there was a lot of Wild West going on in Europe and North America then, uh, but I suspect it was even more in Asia even then. Um, I mean, one 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 would one would obviously point out the fact that Mount Gox was not in it well, was not in North America, <laughs> nor was it in uh, Europe. <laughs> uh, uh, the cautionary tale that it is. Um, my, I guess uh, it's, I, I go back to one of these uh, Buckminster Fuller uh, quotes where you, you don't change, uh, you don't change the world by uh, incremental improvements. You change the world by building something new that everyone likes better. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your perspective on that, especially given, you know, your experience both in the regulatory side and in the innovation side? Uh, well, that, that is a, that is a tough one though. Um, as as a, as an innovator, you know, I would love to have something um, that is brand new. You know, it's going to change the whole market uh, fairly well. You know, adoption, well liked kind of a platform. You know, you know where you're going to change the world. You know, but then again, in a very practical, pragmatic kind of a approach, you know, at, at this current situation, is that we we should really take a step back and look at how we can help this crypto industry or help this blockchain industry grow. So anything that is too wild, too out of, out of the box, too, too innovative, you know, or, or very manipulative, the mainstream people will not be able to accept what we are doing. And when this thing happens, uh, they will give us and give, give us a very bad uh, reputation and in which I have really uh, seen that happening in 2017 until today um, our the industry in terms of the reputation is not the best so I, I would love to be the yes man uh, 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 right now you know come out with something or a platform or a uh, project that is more well like uh, acceptable to the mainstream uh, uh, companies then we work on a stage two or stage three where we can change the world with it. Because I spoke to Gordon as well, you know, earlier on in terms of the financial system. You know, I do believe personally that there will be a situation where a lot of our transactions globally are to be all crypto, crypto centric. You know, but in order for us to make that happen, there must be a very, very big claustrophobic kind of um, situation bigger than, than COVID-19 that is going to change the whole system. You know, but, but we cannot afford to have that bad thing happen again you know, anytime soon. So, 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 so coming back again to the very practical... Practi or can't we? Wow. Man. <laughs> or we may not have a choice. No, nah, no, let's not, let's not go there, man. So, but, 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 but again, very practical, but, but very practical things is that I, I think, you know, uh, crypto will be a very well liked product, a uh, very well liked uh, 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 instrument uh, in, in, in the later future. Right now, we just got to stay friendly and make sure that it's been adopted and not thinking that we are a bad actor. And from there, we build on, build on our products for, for stage two, stage three, stage five, or stage 10, you know, where we can grow very, very much uh, and, and execute at, at very at a very big extent where we can really change the world, you know. So right now, um, we can't change the world yet, you know. So we just stay, stay low and make sure that we do the right things to build the right foundation. And trust me, in the next five to 10 years, the whole infrastructure will change. The whole, um, the whole um, uh, economy will change, you know. And 
I do see that crypto is going to play a much bigger role as, as compared to now. Because now, if you look at crypto, many of us will see this as a money game, you know, as a very speculative kind of a, a, a product. You know, that's about it. You know, you, you can see from all the communities, you know, they are all looking at airdrops. They are all looking at the money aspects of things. They are not so much into the technology part, you know. So we have to slowly adopt make sure that the blockchain technology is, is there. People can accept it. They know that cryptocurrency is not just a speculation tool. And then a lot of innovations will come together with it and it will be integrated in our daily lives. And, and, and again, that's also part of the content that I've written for the, uh, for, for the, for, for the book titled uh, Blockchain Revolution 2030. I like it. Uh, Gordon, can I, can I get one more in? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the only because you were cool about letting Luke line jump. So I'm <laughs> delaying Croatia for you, my friend. Go ahead. Okay. Um, oh, damn. <laughs> just no, no, went out of my okay. head. Go, go, I'm just teasing you. Go ahead. Uh, it's, um, it was around the uh, governance. That's it. Uh, as Wolf brought up and uh, Luke sort of side side one of the side parts of, of governance is uh, authenticatable identity uh, or accountable identity uh, whether or not it's actually disclosing uh, true identity doesn't really matter as long as you're accountable uh, how do you see the uh, conundrum of the commons I like to call it um, with respect to decentralization when we get to decentralization one can implement reputation uh, as part of it, but you're still effectively asking an exceptionally large body of people in lieu of a single decision maker to make decisions. How do you see that playing out over the next, say, five years, 10 years, as we sort of move towards the DAO model of uh, the collective making the decisions rather than, uh, you know, appointed representatives. Oh, okay. So yeah. I, 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 I think, um, uh, how should I word it in a nicer manner? You, you look at it this way, you know, <laughs> whatever, the, whatever the mechanism is, you know, in terms of uh, the decision making, whether it's consensus, uh, whether it's a decentralized, whether it's GAO and so forth, I think the, the main issue is this. Do you, do you really believe in the, 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 the consensus? Do you really believe that that 100 people is really very objective, non-biased? You know? So that, that is another uh, part uh, of sorry. it. I, I, guess the, I guess the question is, are they objective and non-biased in the aggregate? Like when yes. you crowdsource their points of view, is what you end up with objective yes. and non-biased? I think that's yes. the question. A, a lot of these are all influ influence decision, all right? A lot of, I don't talk about products, we don't talk about names right here, right now, right? But a lot of all this chain, a lot of all this product, they have sort of this mechanism that they are working on that seems to be fair. But in my humble opinion, they are all bullshit. Because all <laughs> this... All this decision... Shout out rules. <laughs> Channel House Rule on, 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 on YouTube is not going to work, man, Marco. So, <laughs> so yeah. this, this, this bullshit kind of um, co consensus model is never going to work. You know, it's just, it's just actually, in my view, is a byproduct that leads us to a bigger, bigger product. All right. Because all these consensus model are all influenced by certain people, you know, all these uh, identities that are not accounted for could be a hundred Marco and a, another hundred Andy. And we all sit together and say that, hey, the decision is to, you know, say yes, and, 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 and it would be a yes. So again, uh, I, well, let's I, leave, I, let's leave civil attacks out of, out of the equation. Okay, let's assume that everyone gets one vote. <laughs> uh, and Marco, after this, I got to pass it to Croatia. So that, that was, sure. that, that was your, Final view. <laughs> Go for it. I, I think I think it's, it's, it's a it's a byproduct to something even bigger. You know, right right now, what we see, whether it's one vote, two votes, and so forth, to make this decision, I, I think is still not a very fair. Uh, uh, it's not it's still not a very fair thing. 
you just put it this way, whether or not we are decentralized or not decentralized, or Bitcoin is decentralized or not decentralized, there's also a very big possibility that there are wheels or big players right now that are trying to accumulate as many Bitcoin as they can. You know, and then and then that will not be a very decentralized coin anymore. You know, so you know, it's is 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 not how this you know in the in the long term, you know, all these things will be reduced and it will be modified. And whether or not this digital identity is going to evolve to to, to something that is really non-biased, I, I have my doubts in them. But coming back to, to the point on 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 how this is going to pan out in the short term, I think this is a very good concept that is going to make a hell of a lot of difference for our future. You know, I, I don't. I also don't want to say too much because, you know, by 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 condemning some of this consensus model, is also condemning my work, uh, uh very much. <laughs> so let's leave this uh, as a as a closed door conversation later on, man, Marco. This is the show of radical. Thank you very much, Andy. That's, that's we have a I lawyer in house, you know. We have a lawyer. He's gonna pen us, pen down I'm everything. Give me a subpoena. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I'm officially legal counsel. Um, Luca and Eddie, can you, Team Croatia, and thank you, Marco. Luca and Eddie, are you able to unmute yourself? Because my, my cat's making large noises in the background here. Luca, Eddie? Okay. Eddie. Yeah. 10 seconds. They are now co-hosts, so they should be able to. They should. Uh, Eddie was having an issue with his, my, my cat's just like attacking me. Um, you know, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna change the order for a second. Um, Bellin, if you don't mind. Uh, so Bellin and I just connected on LinkedIn because I saw her um, in the group. She's got a really interesting bio, uh, I guess. Privacy and data attorney from the EU. So, Bellin, I know I'm putting you a little bit on the spot, but hello. We appreciate your <laughs> If you'd like to join for a moment and throw the hat at Andy and throw a question at him, you're welcome to. And unmute yourself. She's she's decentralized. Hello. Yeah, there you are. Uh, yeah, your mic. Yes, is now. Hi, yes. hello everyone. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Yeah, as well. Good morning. Good afternoon here from Barcelona. Uh, yes, I do have a question as, as you know, about this uh, blockchain technology. Uh, I mean, we all know that uh, the regulations here in Europe are quite stringent in terms of, for instance, like the right to be forgotten and, and you know, the, the compliance with with of this, there's a specific technology with, with some rules under the GDPR. So how is this handled in Singapore, in Asia in general? Uh, we, we have very similar to GDPR kind of a uh, uh, model. Um, but but uh, in, in Singapore, especially, you know, we, the, the privacy uh, uh, law is very straightforward. You know, um, if you are, Collecting like a, like a sensitive data, like medical data and so forth, you've got to be compliant. You know, so so maybe the, the shorter answer to, to your question is that uh, in in Singapore and Asia, in terms of privacy rules, uh, they are much very much aligned with uh, what you see in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, in 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 time to come as well, you know, we we will also look at uh, something more. Uh, so some a system that is uh, that is uh, collecting more data from uh, from all the different users, and uh, like what we discussed with Marco just now, you know, all this data will be put on chain, you know, government or, or the the relevant ministries or regulation uh, bodies, they can only get access to certain uh, data, not all the sensitive data, so. Um, so these are some of the things that, 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 that some governments are planning to do, in fact. You know, they, they will be collecting data, they will have a different access point, but all these things will be decentralized, uh, on, on the, or, or at least on the ledger, where they have 
to uh, they have their all this data protect, protected in a certain manner, and and they will need a different mechanism to unlock some of the more sensitive data. Uh, uh, and and again, I can't I, I can't uh, uh, share too too much in detail some of their plans, but but okay. this this is definitely in the works, definitely in the works. Okay. Yeah, well, I think, yes, uh, thank you for, for the answer. The, the thing is, I, what, what will be interesting maybe is because I see here the regulator is kind of like what they did is like they give us the law, the GDPR, and obviously each company uh, that is using blockchain technology is kind of forced to, you know, to, to comply and to implement their projects in alignment with such law. It's not the, the other way around. And what I mean is like the regulator really didn't come up with a specific GDPR law for blockchain, right? So this is forcing companies really to implement any blockchain projects, uh, you know, uh, seeing if they can go ahead and comply with this law. Is this the same situation in, in Asia and Singapore? Like our regulators kind of put in the law and then the companies have to make it really hard to comply with it and, and find the way around to do it. Oh, um, then, then like the other way around is like the yeah. regulator is like helping, being supportive, kind of like giving some laws that apply to this technology. I, I, I think I think is you know you know for GDPR or this uh, privacy policies, they are not they they are not uh, blockchain uh, not not you know they didn't create this purely for blockchain. So okay, coming back to the general rule is that all these tech companies must comply. To the privacy, or you know, the, the the data protection and privacy law that is within the country. So it's not so much on, on on blockchain, but all the companies that we know must comply to this privacy law. And and again, um, I don't think there's are. This is some. This is something very difficult to do, you know, because by nature, all these companies must comply to to the GDPR equivalent, you know, in, in their country. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, the 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 responsibility lies with both okay. the, the 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 government, the regulators, and also the companies because the regulators need to regulate and make sure that these are all compliant, and the companies must make sure that they are compliant and also audited in in some cases, uh, depending on what kind of data they are trying to obtain. You know, whether it's very personal ones like uh, medical records or or you know, they are just, you know, talking about just pure names, uh, addresses, and so forth. So there are different levels of, uh, of, of, of data and how they manage it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Bill. So okay. we're, we're kind of towards the end here, but Tim Lewis, famous Tim Lewis, um, is going to be joining us in a second. So we're going to give him a moment to log in because he wants to meet you, Andy. Um, Yogo, uh, if you're there, you and I just talked on LinkedIn. You're, you're, you're welcome to, it's going to have to be a little bit quick because Tim's jumping on, but you're, you're welcome to unmute yourself and say hi to Andy and ask a question or comment. If, if you're, Hello, if you're playing. Hey, hi. Hey, hey. And are you in Portugal right now, Yogo? Uh, yeah, I'm currently staying here uh, during this COVID uh, thing. Uh, I'm from crypto.com uh, and uh, the headquarters are in Hong Kong uh, right now right now I'm staying here and this is how we do our our meetings and everything <laughs> All I, the I, like, I, I don't know if you caught it but Sanders and my co-host co-organizer is in Portugal right now as well oh yeah so Sanders away from Portugal <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and, and very thing. Sanders uh, I'm sorry say again we miss you uh, so I was just asking, uh, where is Sanders staying? I'm, I'm close by Faro, uh, Diego. Ah, okay, okay. In the, south, in the south of Portugal. And where are you? Lisbon, Lisbon. Oh, you're in Lisbon. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Loving the show. <laughs> All right, uh, Diego, so pl please ask, say hi to Andy and ask a question, just so I can get you in before Tim joins in. Uh, so I really, at the moment, uh, in terms of in terms of compliance, there's there's not much uh, I can add. What what I what I would uh, like to ask maybe 
is what do you think about uh, Russia going into use waves for 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 long platform even though even though uh, banks don't don't have full um, don't don't have full authorization to to go in and do that in a decentralized decentralized manner um but well i i i, I would not uh, comment too deeply on that you know but mm -hmm. but what what i do what i do see is that um Uh, it, is, it is good to see that uh, efforts are put in. Um, I have yet to see the outcome, you know. So, so, so I, I do hope to see um, more of the outcome right now instead of uh, jumping the gun to, to, to make the comment. But, but it's, it's still good effort, you know, in, in, in a particular manner from a, from a crypto or blockchain standpoint, I think it's, it's still something good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. You off. So you, you, oh, there he is. All right, you're gonna th thank you. Hopefully, I'm saying your name correctly. Thank you for the question and for joining in. Tim, we're gonna we're gonna. I, I can't say we saved the best for last because <laughs> I don't want anyone else's feelings. But um, we saved a really good one for last. You, you so, saved someone for last. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, yeah I'm, really, I'm glad. Good. You know, I, I wanted to pop on and pay my respects to Andy. So, uh, Andy, how are you doing? Um, you know legend in the field and it's, it's good to, you know, I don't believe that, I'm not sure if we've ever met in person. I mean, I've been traveling for the last six or seven years uh, doing the blockchain thing and, you know, as you know, it just gets so busy and moves so much, but, you know, really, really excited to know that you're, you're building a relationship with Gordon and uh, Sander and, uh, you know, a lot of respect for the work that you're getting completed um, out in, in Singapore and, and abroad. Uh, so I wanted, wanted to pop in and say hello. So I'm not sure what What, what, what you guys have covered so far, what, what have you guys been talking about? Wow, some really sensitive <laughs> ones and some fun ones. And, um, and, and, and you know, we, we, we are all here to, to, to talk and discuss about things. So let's, let's, have, let, let's, 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 let's have more chats, you know? You know. Well, what's the status of supply chain uh, usage uh, for blockchain technology? Uh, where are you guys at with Infinity? Uh, what type of clients uh, have you guys been uh, operating with? Uh, so, and, and so, so um, maybe a bit of um, a bit of uh, background. And so, we, we we used to run a supply chain blockchain company. Um, we have clients from uh, tobacco companies uh, and wine companies, and then um, we have also done pilot trials of government for government leading brands and so forth. Uh, in, in the supply chain space, you know, we have also helped a uh, listed company to go into uh, uh, go full on for, uh, using blockchain for some of their business processes. Um, but for, for the product that we have uh, developed uh, back then is to uh, make traceability a bit more interesting. You know, we talk about from farm to table and also to recycle. You know, because when we talk about wine, high value price uh, wine, um, the, the main issues with authentication is not, uh, is, is, is not at where you open up the wine. You know, it's not how they, how they mimic how the taste of the red wine or the white wine, how it is. But the real fake uh, 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 bad actors, what they do is that they, they recycle the bottles. You know, so when we talk about traceability and so forth, we talk about tracing the bottles as well, you know, so that it, it will be a full tracing uh, 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 ability. And, and if you look at the, 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 the different sums in terms of the cost, the expenses and so forth, the hardest to make is actually the, the bottle for some of, for some of these uh, uh, wine uh, 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 or the packaging. It's something that, that, that is more expensive. The ingredient inside, you know, for because our clients are from China, so the, the ingredients inside the white wine and so forth, the alcohol content, the taste, uh, all of this can 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 be reproduced, you know. But the bottle is the one that is very hard to, to reproduce. So our 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 solution back then was to trace from um, the source all the way to recycle. Back to the current current times, you know, where we. Where, where I give a very practical uh, adoption strategies, you know, for, for, for to, towards government and towards some of these companies, you know, uh, 
um, where, whether it's a, a bottle of mineral water or to a bottle of high-end champagne, um, the, the, the logic is always the same. You know, as long as you think that there's a value for blockchain for your product, you know, uh, whether it's a $1 mineral water that is from Cambodia, maybe, you know, they want to prove that, that this is where the water is from. This is the country of origin because they are proud of where, where the water source is to a bottle of wine that is uh, $5,000. You know, we, we give them very practical uh, adoption uh, methods to make sure that in every different aspects of their supply chain uh, 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 infrastructure and model, uh, blockchain technology can be adopted in the simplest manner. So, so this, is, this, is the, uh, this is at least for, for my own uh, opinion and always the kind of strategy is to make it very simple. You know, because it's already a very tough job for, for, for traditional companies to transit themselves to, to use blockchain. You know, so I, I tend to make it very simple. And in fact, it is almost seamless. Uh, you, you can't feel it, you know. Uh, that the blockchain exists in their current supply chain space, you know, because it is embedded into part of their system already, you know, mm -hmm. part of their process as well. You know, sometimes we we tell we tell some of our clients, you know, who, who did a uh, supply chain uh, pilot trial with us on uh, Kobe beef, you know, they we we actually use uh, traditional IoT devices, you know, to to capture the, the, the whole marble, you know, the whole fingerprint, you know, or the whole, you know, the whole grain you know, that, that you see on, 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 the, on the piece of meat, you know, as a form of uh, identification. Mm -hmm. You know, some people think that Andy is crazy, right? But wait, 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 Andy, that's awesome. You're, you're kind of using the marbling as its own QR code? Right. I mean, it's not a QR oh, code, but it's, it's a, no, it's a I mean, by analogy, it's... Right. Right. So, so if you, if you look at it from that perspective, um, companies will be very, very open to look at how the technology is going to work. You know, people will not think that uh, Impossible Burger is just, is just crap. You know, but to me, is as long as you can tell people that, you know, where this is made, how this is made, you know, you give them the right kind of detail, people will be able to, 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 to adopt that kind of food. And to be real honest, you know, in, in, in years to come, the food supply will be very scarce. You know, you will be looking at DNA uh, modified uh, 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 chicken meat or, or, or cow meat, you know, from a very small piece, you grow into a very big piece, you know, or you eat crickets and things like that. People want a form of security. So mm -hmm. the food security plus blockchain technology in the current supply chain system is really going to help because you give the extra assurance that supply chain, things in the supply chain are all well documented. Again, it has to be well documented because she in shit out, man. Because if you put in bad data, you get in the bad kind of outcome. So again, the whole mechanism, the whole consensus mechanism got to be in place and it got to be sound in order for this whole perfect scenario to work. I, I, I hope I didn't say too much. Man. No, you know, it's, it's funny. It's definitely one of the areas in which uh, the technology lends its space to uh, weeding out bad actors along the supply chain, um, wherever, wherever they are. It's interesting that you found that most of the bad actors from the wine came after the bottle had been opened. Uh, and, and I understand the, 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 the wine industry, the, the high-end wine industry, is just fraught with, with fraud. Um, so that was Not an interesting yeah, interesting attack method on it. If, if you were at all still um, operating in, in that particular business, there, there is a, I, I'm living here in Berlin now myself, I'm working on uh, development of DAO systems. So I'm working yeah. on different legal frameworks uh, and technical frameworks for DAOs. Um, but I do, ha I happen to have a, a, a great connection that runs the, um, uh, the uh, an incubator uh, for Metro uh, Groceries, which is one of the larger groceries here. So you know, we had been talking about that recently, Andy. So if that's so still an interest in you, you know, I'd love to connect you guys. And uh, I know that they're looking to incubate some people that are doing something similar. They're, they're, I think they're the largest retailer of wine in, might, might be all of Europe. It's definitely all of Germany. 
what might be all of Europe, and they've been barking down that tree. Uh, so, no, you've been doing good work, man. Uh, thanks for coming on. Just wanted to say hello. Hey, thanks, Tim. Steve. Sorry, I'm thanks, Andrew. But Tim, I, I'm, I know you're slammed. I appreciate that you showed your face and engaged in dialogue and asked good questions, and I'm glad you two connected. And Andy, sorry, I, I, I verbally stepped on you, but you, you got a lot no, of fans. No. <laughs> no, no, let, let's, let's talk a lot more on the Telegram. Um, like I always uh, tell all my friends and my partners and so forth, um, right now I'm, I'm in, a, in, 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 a, in a stage in, the, in, in my life where I, you know, creating companies, incubating companies, that, that, that is more like a, like a hobby sometimes, you know. I really want to be part of a unicorn, you know. Um, I really want to, I can even work for a unicorn because there's no way, uh, and let's be very practical, that I can create a, a, a brand new unicorn on my own, you know, and, and that's a tough job, yeah? So I really love to talk to more people, to, or maybe you can all come together to, to create a new, new unicorn, or I can work for another unicorn, is also fine, because to me, that is going to keep me going, because that to me is mm -hmm. a form of innovation, and that is also a better use of my time and, and, and expertise, you know, because I can always uh, make good revenue or outcome, you know, with, with, the, with the investments that I have, uh, with the companies that I have, but that is already not something that can keep me going. Sander will know this very well because there's no challenge anymore. You know, sometimes some people tell me, do you want to do some shit coin, you know? What, say, what do I? No way I would do it, man, because it's too simple to, to, to be manipulative. Yeah. Too simple to tell people that this project is damn good. All right. Because in the earlier conversation, Tim, Tim, Tim and Tim will not know this, but, you know, we have a, a, a full uh, a, a ecos e ecosystem, you know, from a, from a marketing company to a liquidity company, uh, you know, to help people build the trust, to help to build the project and so forth and so on. You know, to me now, all these things become a very simple task, you know. So, uni being a unicorn is very different, you know. It's not just about making money. It's about making a hell lot of difference in that industry, you know. So, that also one of the reasons why, you know, I don't mind working for somebody because I want my time to be well spent, you know. They may be paying me peanuts, man, but I'm okay. I'm happy. With the peanuts, but I I just want to make the unicorn happen and grow even bigger, you know, during during my lifetime, you know. So that's that's something that I love to share. I I think that's the best way to possibly end this show because I was I'm I want to go out there and like kick ass right now based on what you said. <laughs> so you, you you jazzed me up a lot. Uh, Sander, thank you so much for introducing us to your friend Andy. This is, to be honest, I didn't know about him, and now I do. And now I feel like the biggest thing going on is something that eluded my gaze, but now I'm aware, and I think a lot of us feel this way. So thank you, and I'm gonna, I'll pass it back to you. And Andy, sure. thank you. Yeah, and, and, and you're more than welcome, Gordon. And like, like I said to you in our pre talk when we were discussing, okay, who are going to be our guest speakers within the next couple of weeks and months? and what ideas do we have? Because we want to take this not only online, but maybe in the future we will do networking events because this is you know, our payback to the industry. We connect people. If they can do business, great. If they can share insights, that, that's great. You know, This is how we can all help each other and uh, work on a bigger purpose. And like I said, Andy's not only my personal friend, but he's also my number one guy when I want to bring something to Asia or if I want to get something from Asia to the European market or maybe US market also, th th this is the guy to go to. So I'm happy to connect him to, you know, you Gordon, also to friends like, like Timothy and all the other speakers that were participating in today's show. So maybe as a, as a quick close out on this call, uh, let me reach out to the audience that were participating in the live stream. We really appreciate you and that you're participating every week. So uh, keep on uh, joining and keep on coming back next week. We are here same time for everybody that's watching the recording. Thank you also for that. And please share the link so we can build the community on our YouTube channel. And please join also our Telegram channels to our main speaker today, Andy, my friend, I really appreciate you. I know that you're really busy running all your businesses. 
uh, in and outside Asia and that you're still able to spend at least a couple of hours with us. Uh, and that excludes the pre-interview that, that we did a couple of days ago. I really appreciate you and thank, thanks for being a friend. I also want to say thanks to Tim. Uh, thanks for popping in. I know that you're busy also with all kinds of ventures, but I'm happy to see you also again. So for everybody for now, I wish you a good day. I'm going to say uh, bye from Faro in Portugal. Next week, I will be back in Amsterdam. And we look forward on behalf of Gordon and myself to see you all next week. So have a good day, everybody. And we see each other soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Andy. Thanks.